All right, chip of the day. The chip of the day is an IRFK4H150. It is a FET, it is a power FET, uh, a hex, pet, hex pack power module. And uh, the power of this particular device is 145 amps. <laughs> yeah, it's the biggest FET I've ever owned. 145 amps at 100 volts. <laughs> man. And this is what it looks like. It's a bruiser. It is big. All right. I found this in the free pile the other day. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Uh, it's got a couple extra diodes in here. I'll show, kind of tell you what those are. But yeah, look at this thing. Uh, it is it is giant. Let me, uh, let me find a measuring device here. Uh, yeah, 90 millimeters. The, the, it's this big copper slug here that it's on is, uh, is five millimeters thick. Um, and uh, yeah, 20 millimeters across. It's just giant. 145 amps. Yikes. And that's DC. Pulsed, it can do 500 amps. <laughs> 500 amps. Yikes. All right. Um, so you'd say, Wow, I mean, this looks like it consumes lots and lots of power, right? So if you go back to the data sheet, the, the uh, it's not in focus, there we go. The uh, our on resistance is 14 milliohms, okay? So 14 milliohms. So let's do some calculation. If we had uh, I squared R, so 145 amps times 0 0.014 uh, ohms, is 295 watts. <laughs> 295 watts. Yikes. <laughs> That's a bruiser of a uh, bruiser of a, of a transistor. Okay. So um, this is what's on here. Uh, there's a, a protection diode on on uh, the uh, drain source, and a protection diode on the gate as well. This little 18 volt zener on the input here, and there's a 70, full, 70 volt, I forget what they're called, the transient suppression diode or something like that. They kind of conduct in both directions. Uh, they're kind of like back-to-back -back zeners, 70 volt back-to-back -back zeners. Um, so if anything gets above 70 volts, it'll clamp it on the, on the output here. Um, the washing machine's making weird noises. Um, and the cool thing about these also is the, uh, the gate is isolated, okay? There's actually an insulator, an insulator here on the gate, and so the whatever you're doing on the output, the uh, the gate is isolated. And uh, there's actually a separate, uh, a little separate ground here too. So there's two ways to get to the, to get to the, uh, get to the drain. Um, so it's a four-pin device. This is the source. This is the drain. Um, and then there's two wires here at the bottom uh, labeled pins uh, five and four. <laughs> so this is, this is pin five, this is pin four, this is pin one, and this is pin three. They, they, I guess the pin two is there. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a, a, kind of a weird kind of a weird device, but yeah, floating gate, 100, 150 amps, 145 amps. Yeah, uh, wow. Um, but does it work? Okay, so yeah, let's test it out. We'll get out our, we'll get out our uh, handy dandy tester here, and we'll hook it up. Uh, gate source, gate source drain, gate source drain. Let's see if it works. There we go. It's an NE MOS. Uh, three volts, turn on voltage, uh, on resistance 0.2 ohms. I'm just thinking can't measure, can't measure that. Uh, but yeah, it is working. So if I ever come across the need for 500 watt, uh, 500 amps of pulsed power, <laughs> yikes. Uh, yeah, this probably make a nice spot welder or something. Uh, that's for sure. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah, chip of the day, an R, an IRFK4H150.